Mary, thank you for coming in today. Thanks I'm for having so me. Excited. Look, first of all, are we allowed to share how young are you, Mary? I'm 80 years young. Oh, my goodness. And look at you. You're an absolute style icon. Where do you think your style of inspiration has come from? Um, I think, I don't know, I, I grew up in a family of eight mm -hmm. and it was always a fight who was going to wear what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I used to make my own clothes. Oh, wow. How, how young were you when that journey started? Probably 11. Wow. Yeah. So you've been designing since that age. <laughs> I used to cut it out with newspaper Cut it out on the floor. Um, my mum would buy a piece of fabric and then I'd sew it on a treadle machine, you know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, and, and I used to embroider at school. I just loved creative side. Yeah. And I was the only one out of the eight of us that did that. So, yeah. Wow. It was fight for survival. Right. Who had the best. And maybe that <laughs> fight for survival actually opened the door of your creativity. Yep. It did. How incredible. So over the years, I know you're no stranger to hard work. You've had a number of different businesses. You're a yep. serial entrepreneur. You have run a motel. Yes. You have and been the chief cook for the yes. motel. Um, you have run your own fashion wear and homeware store here in Auckland. Yes. You're also the co-owner and co-creator of Cube Living, who are doing amazing things Jobs. in the housing <laughs> market. You're very busy. Very busy. But let's talk about your wardrobe and what you do because you're so full of energy what you do to add more color to your life through your wardrobe tell me some of your greatest tips okay I, I feel um in life you only get one shot at life a and to be happy always to be happy is color mm. so I always feel if I wear color I'm happy all day mm. and then people say to me oh wow you look gorgeous and I think it's not even a great outfit. It's just something cheap and looks good. Well, and that works for me as well. For chips yep. and cheap and looks good. Yeah, and so it looks good. Yeah. Wow, Mira, you're such an inspiration to me. So you've brought in some items from your wardrobe, wardrobe. Yes. to show me how you've put different looks together. And I know that some people um, might look at particularly older women, yes. and I'm talking from my age, so I'm nearly yeah. 50, us okay. and over. Yes. They might judge us because, you know, we're afraid to wear colour or we get told yes. to wear black all the time because it's yes. slimming, all those sorts of things. So how, what have you done to add colour and texture to your wardrobe? Let's talk through some pieces. Okay, so um, as I said, I love colour. Mm -hmm. So to, to begin with, you need a jacket mm -hmm. or a coat. So I bought that when I was on holiday in New York. Gorgeous. And I thought, hmm, that would look nice with a pair of black trousers and a nice black polo neck oh, for simple. the winter. Simple and bright shoes. Oh, yes. So you maybe, oh, you couldn't pair it up. I would wear, wear the black boots. The black boots with a yep. little bit of colour detail. A little bit of colour. Nice. Yeah, and a, and a bright Necklace around your neck, mm -hmm. like I, I've got a heart today, but I think anything bulky. Something chunky. Something chunky. Fabulous. Yep, yeah. Yep, and if yep. you're wearing the shoes like this, of course, you've got those key colours in there. You could add yep, a bit you of You could add it. Well, it matches your coat too. Yeah, and lovely. black. Black always goes with a jacket yep. of any colour. Yep. So I'm happy with that. And then you can redo that look with a heavy coat. Oh, now tell me about this beauty. This is absolutely incredible. It, it almost is, looks like it's it um, channeling like American Indians or something like it that. Is, no, it's not. But, but it's that not. From? And it has a collar that you can sit right up <gasps> in the cold. Perfect. And it's nice to wear with leggings. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So something a bit oversized and then yep, you've got something yep. a bit more fitted underneath. M underneath. Now, speaking of colour, Mary, you've got mm -hmm. this. And what I'm really admiring about this outfit is the colour and the texture. Yes. So what would you pair this up with? Um, I feel that velvet is an old fabric favourite and I have a few bits of velvet mm -hmm. I feel like you could match that up with anything long boots short boots sandals really to go out at night yes lots of gold in it so yeah. you don't need a jacket over the top maybe right. a shawl so this is because of the fabric. It's still quite a light dress. So but this it's is quite, warm as well. Yeah, so good trans-seasonal outfit. Yep. 
Yeah. Lovely, and it's got yeah. sort of lots of autumny colours in and, there And as it looks well. amazing on. Yeah, I bet. Amazing Gorgeous. on. I love the sheen because I'm yes. a fan of a bit of a sparkle to me be Me too, fair. me too. I love bubbles. <laughs> I know, we're like, we're like magpies we are. Now, speaking of bubbles, now this is another, this is a New Zealand brand, is that yes. right? Yep. I love the detail. So every time I see pearls, I always think Chanel and classic yes. designs. So yep. tell me about yep. this wee outfit well, here. Well, this outfit, um, I sort of, was shopping around, not mm -hmm. looking for outfits. I'm a person that goes into a shop and thinks, oh, that's quite nice. Oh, what price is that? I'll have that. Perfect. I don't try it. Right. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I never try anything on. Wow. Never, never try anything so on. So would that be because you really understand implicitly your colours yes, and your I body do. shape? I do. So you know what's going to And, and I know you. what size I take. Ah, there you so, go. So if the sizes are different in different, like different countries, you get UK and you get... Mm -hmm. England, they've all got different sizes. Beautiful. But, but usually New Zealand ones have that same same fitting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course here, cute classic outfit. Yeah. Love yeah. the design of this dress. Everybody what loved I that. I wore it to my da granddaughter's 21st. Oh, did you? In April in Australia. Gorgeous. And they all were looking at my label. Oh, there you go. Fancy. What I love about it is it is classic black for people who might be a little bit scared of, of colour. Yep. There you go. There yep. you go. Yep. But it's got those little pops of personality in and it. And it does. And it's away from your face, mm. which means it's not too bright. And what I think is super cool about this is you can add a variety of different yep. necklaces exactly, or shoes exactly. to accessorise. Or handbags. Yep, yep. Love a good handbag. Yeah. Love the handbag. Now, I know that the boho look is coming back into yes. spring and summer. So this is one of your twin sets from your that's wardrobe right. as well. That's right. That's right. So one of them. So when wearing such a neutral colour, what would you pair something up gold. with? Gold. Gold. Mm -hmm. Wow. I oh, wear yeah. um, a big beaded gold necklace with that mm -hmm. and a gold bracelet, all the same matching, mm. and floaty earrings. You are that. so clever. I love <laughs> and, that. And boots. Oh, of course. Now, speaking yeah. of boots, I'm just going to grab these off our yep. table here. Now, these are great. That and they go, they go look. with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. very cool. And, Urban and cowgirl. The, co the gold makes it more elegant ah. if you want that elegant look and ordinary shoes. And what sort of uh, boots are these? These they're, are from your wardrobe as well? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And they're um, alligator, they call them. <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> I just popped them back here. So let's move through. Now, this is one of my favourite, favourite pieces here okay. in your in your selection. I'll just pop it off that hook. Yep. This is so elegant and so floaty, I nearly stole this off the rack. Yep. Tell me about this gorgeous dress. This is silk, mm -hmm. and it's a New Zealand designer. Mm -hmm. um, I bought it seven years ago mm. and decided I'd wear it to my son's 50th birthday. Oh. And that was the last time I wore it. Now, I know that there are a lot of women <laughs> my age and older who would look at this and go, this is a lot of personality. This is really a big, a big piece to wear. It's a, it's a lot, a lot energy wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for people who might be a bit shy, how no. would we tone this down? I, I wore it with silver sandals. Oh. And, and because when in the light it shines like silver, Oh, gorgeous. And the silver earrings I have yep. that I wear, I will show you later. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it just looked it elegant. Looks, it looks very elegant. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. An elegant piece. So, Mary, let's talk colour. 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 Yep. What are simple ways that we can add more colour to our wardrobe? I feel a lot of people don't wear a bright enough lipstick either. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a fan of bright lipsticks. As am I. I love lipsticks. <laughs> love lipsticks. And, and when I go out and I look at someone, I think, oh, a bit of lipstick, you look so much better. Mm. Makes your face brighter. You feel better, happier. And, and then you can mix it with bright things around your face. Mm. You know, anything you're going to wear. You must wear lipstick. And there's a lot of studies now that prove that the colours that we have around us really impact our mood. They do. So how? what colours do you think would be better for somebody who might be struggling? What do you think of those uh, dopamine-enriched yeah, yeah, yeah. colours? I, I, I think um, I'm not a green person, mm -hmm. and, and the reason I don't like green is growing up I had green twin sets from, okay. from day one <laughs> till, till I was old enough to say no. So, yeah. so I don't wear green, but green is a beautiful colour, mm. and it looks nice on a lot of people. Mm. Um, and I think people who are a bit nervous to wear bright things start lightly, a light green. 
Okay. And not, not red, mm. a light green. So red might be too intense, but green is exactly. an easy way to open exactly. that door. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now, there's one other tip I wanted to take. There's so many things here, some of which you cur <laughs> curated and some of which you have actually designed yourself. Yes. Tell me about this gorgeous piece. Well, again, it's colour. Mm. I love it, just saying. <laughs> I, I love the style. Um, and I had a lady who was 85. She loved to do things. I said to her, if I give you a design and the fabric, can you sew it for me? Yes. So I, she made that, sewed them up for me with my design. And I and she said, I love it. Is there any more? So I, so I got her to make oh. a few of the same design. <laughs> Oh, it's just it's just beautiful. I think it's really classic and really yes. elegant. And, and it's which, nice with anything, Monique. Yeah. I mean, a pair of black leggings or with black pants. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And same with this one the as well, as another that. one of your great designs. Yep. Classic and it's different from anything else we see in the market right Exactly. Now. And it's yeah. got a few pin tucks to make it a little bit different. A little bit fancy. And the sleeve. Yeah, a little bit of detail because mm. I love detail. Me too. Love it. Now, the love final it. thing I wanted to share was just before we started filming, yes. you shared a very good life hack that everybody in the studio started going oh my goodness we were today years old when we learnt this so here is one of your beautiful outfits that you wear every day yep. love the pants want to wear them myself they may not go home with you today <laughs> and you had it paired up with this top so my first option was to take the blouse which was actually hanging inside out, out. yeah and you said you do that with a number of pieces yes. in your wardrobe I Why do is that? well well firstly um, they get grubby Mm -hmm. and, and I mean a wardrobe is supposed to be clean but you put all sorts of things in there so true. You, you might be in out in a raincoat and your raincoat isn't that clean but you're going to hang it next to that mm -hmm. so when you go to wear it it's not clean is it no that's true so, so I always turn them inside out <laughs> and you also mentioned something about dust yeah and dust keeps the dust especially the white yeah who knew? Today <laughs> is old. That is a tweetable moment. That's what Oprah would say. Well, Mary, I have to say you have been a huge inspiration to me. You are one of the most stylish women I know. I mean, look at Thank you. Thank you. Bodies. Thank you. And most importantly, she is out there empowering other women to dress their truth as well. She's one of our newest contributors here at Guide to Better Living. So if you want to find out more, head to our website, read some of her amazing articles, and you too will pick up the same inspiration that I have Mary, I am not worthy. You are truly amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank magic. you so much, Monique. Thank you, so darling. wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm an absolute fan of a good high tea. And here at the Jockey Club in Ellerslie, I heard they're doing something extra special. So let's go inside and have a look. So we have had this open this place for just over a year, and um, the initial thought is that um, we we want to explore the wars about racing, and it's such a sport that we passionate about. And we thought, well, uh, will be the initiative to bring new bloods or new people coming into this industry. And the answer for us is that we want to see them uh, at the race course seven days a week. We give them a reason to come. And if they come here, that means they give us an opportunity to um, put them on a learning curve about horse racing and the rich history behind it. We do provide high tea like today. Uh, the high teas are served on Friday, Saturday and Sundays. Uh, they're the most popular high tea hours for sure and during the week event venue. So people can come in here, they can book the venue and they can... I, I think most of the people love it here as a, as a cooked up function place. I think the Auckland Racing Club was established in 18, uh, 1876, uh, so that was a very long time ago. I, I do think the track is actually 1876 meters as well. Uh, they probably built it that way. Um, so the club is separate back then and it's been over 100, 150 years now. Um, so it's, there, there used to be horses training on this track actually. Uh, you'll probably see the painting over there, that's uh, Bone Crusher. 
Uh, he won the race of the century uh, against all Waverly Star. That's two Kiwi champions racing in the front and all the, all the Aussies chasing the back. And he's now resting in peace forever uh, on, the, on this complex. And as you walk out of this, uh, this place, you will see his bronze on the right hand side. Well, that was absolutely delightful. Did you see that venue? It's absolutely magnificent. The, the tea was beautiful and that food was next level. I need to go home for a lie down. Maybe you should come here and try it out for yourself. See you next time. Well, kia ora and welcome to the kitchen. Today we are super excited. A new box here from Cocktail Collective. We are doing an unboxing I'm Anik Bradley, I'm an official self-appointed Glam Ambassador for Cocktail Collective and this is my expert in the kitchen, this is Grant, he is our expert mixologist. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you for having me Monique. I am super excited about this, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. What's in the box? So this is uh, Cocktail Collective's latest offering, this is the Bramble. Oh it's pretty. Pretty true. So beautiful, look at it, it's all ombre and gorgeous. Yeah. How are we going to do this? Two different colours. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll work through the, the, the making of the drink mm -hmm. in two pieces, but we'll Perfect. get to that shortly. Let's have a look see what we've got. Inside the box, one of my favourites, gin. Yep, nice gin. Lots of botanicals going on in there, a bit of juniper and on the orris root and things mm -hmm. like that. So that's going to bring some And nice New Zealand made gin? New Zealand made gin. Perfect. Excellent. And this is a product which, before I knew about Cocktail Collective, I didn't really know what this ingredient was. This is gom. Tell us about that. It's basically a sugar syrup. Mm. Um, in most bars, they're going to use a sugar syrup they probably make on site. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're wanting to put it in a bottle, we add a little bit of gua gum to it, um, oh. which helps to preserve it. But and it sounds uh, fancy. Yeah, it's a French <laughs> technique of keep preserving it. Sugar All syrup. All right, so what is this beauty right here? This is creme de mure. Now, you may have heard of creme de cassis. Yes, I have. So creme de cassis is black currant. Mm -hmm. This is black berry. And I have to turn this around because I want everybody to see that gorgeous colour. It's a lovely natural colour. That's oh, beautiful. When we crack it open, you'll smell. You can, it's almost, you can smell the fresh blackberries in there. It's lovely. lovely. And then, of course, we've got sweet and we've got some gin. And we've got this for our, our blackberry. And this is a little bit of tart, a little bit like me in a drink. A little bit of sour, yes. So, we, so the sour <laughs> lemon juice, Hawke's Bay lemon juice um, bottle for Cocktail Collective. That's going to bring a nice balance to that sweet and sour element of the mm -hmm. drink. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so we, we better crack on with okay, that. Okay, excellent. Now, inside, of course, you've got your uh, measuring cup Thimble thingy. measure. Yep. <laughs> Thimble measure. I always forget the name of that. If you have that. a quick look on the back of your card there, you'll yes. see the recipe, and the recipe is written in parts. Mm -hmm. So the large end is two parts, the mm -hmm. small end is one part. Excellent. So if we need an even number of parts, we're going to be using the large end, an odd number we'll be using. Combination You're very it. clever, I've Please. decided. You're very clever. Well, thank you very much. Um, I've always just thought it was a good single serve here and a more generous single serve That's there, but drink it. responsibly, of course. Let me move this out of the way. So you said we're making this trick in two parts. Two parts. Yes. We're going to start by putting our creme de mure, um, our, our blackberry liqueur, into the bottom of the glass. Okay. There's a couple of different ways you'll see people making these. Sometimes the mure goes on the top. Uh, hold the the uh, measure over the glass. Yes, because we don't want any spillage. <coughs> it's not yep. manners. And then very carefully, oh we're going to top the glasses up well, with ice. I've always wondered what, especially since seeing this box, what does that liqueur smell like? Because I can't imagine oh. what it actually smells yeah. like. I the smell on that. Oh! So. Oh, really, that's lovely. Yeah, you need beautiful. to try it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, lovely. Very natural. Yeah, natural and um, it smells, I know this is a bizarre thing to say, but it smells warming. Yeah, it's a very winter flavour blackberry and um, with, the, with the lemon juice and the right. gin, those botanicals in the gin is we're going to get a, a nice sort of foresty, fruit Yum. to the forest type thing. Love it, love okay. it. Okay. What do we do next? Full of ice, they're going to stick to one side now. We're going to pop these over here while we get our... Basically, we're going to build a gin sour in here. So okay. gin, lemon juice, sugar. Lovely. And we want about half full of ice. Mm -hmm. We're going to take six parts of gin. So that's three of the big, the big three ones? Three of the big ones. We're going to take three parts of our lemon juice, if we could get that ready oh, for Oh, yes, me. of course. That'd be great. I'm a good helper. <laughs> I love that sound, though. That plug glug. Beautiful. Nice. We're going to get... 
three parts of lemon juice. So one big one, one small one. I'm so technical, Grant. Did you notice that? You did, didn't you? One big, one small. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we're going to balance that citrus out with our sweet gom syrup. We'll actually put two parts in for this. Now you can mm. use the gom syrup like a sort of volume switch for sweet and sour. Ooh. If you want to make it more sweet, add more gom. If you prefer it more sour, take, um, take it a bit away. That is a very good tweetable moment right there. I like that. That's a good, good tip to take away. Three part shaker. Mm -hmm. This is our can, our strainer and our cap. The strainer goes on first and the cap. Don't hit it too hard. Yep. I want it to get stuck. And then we're going to hold it as you, we've done this before. Yeah. We're going to hold it either end nice and high. Make sure you're smiling okay. um, and shake it like you mean it. Okay. It's not awkward, is it? It's not awkward. <laughs> is it weird that my hands are getting numb? Not at all. Oh, by Jingos. <laughs> that was, that was okay. an adventure. Yep. So a good shake on there, and then this is just going to get poured, shared over the top. But we want to pour it nice and gently because we want to keep that meal in the bottom. Look at that! I've always wondered how they do those drinks and I, I, I had no idea. I've seen people pouring things over the back of spoons and that just seemed like high maintenance to me. The general rule is if it's got lots of sugar, it's really heavy. Mm. If it's got lots of alcohol, it's very light. Oh! Perfect. Jeez. But look at, look at how that's separated out like that. It's just such a beautiful looking drink. Now you can leave it just like that, but obviously at the moment, most of that blackberry flavor is in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So what the idea is, is what we want to do is just use a spoon. You don't have to use the normal spoon is fine. I was going to say, that's, that's a very attention seeking spoon there, Grant. You just <laughs> want to give it a gentle push just to create that gradient. So it starts to mix. Oh, that's gorgeous. Reminds me of a lava lamp from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> So that's essentially the drink, oh, uh, the drink done. Uh, Garnish wise, this time of year, um, fresh lemon. Oh, this was course. one we found in your garden that earlier. That is correct. Uh, a couple of things we can do with this. I'll do it just very quickly. Two different uh, garnishes. One would be a simple wedge. Mm -hmm. Now one tip with these wedges is just to trim them up so they're nice and neat. Ah, oh, that's such a good and idea. Onto the side of the glass like that. So pretty and so simple. Even I yep. can do that, another, considering I'm domestically challenged. That's another alternative deal. would be a piece of the peel. Mm -hmm. And if we just cut a nice triangle shape out of that and a slit, we can tuck that on the side there. That is very, very cool. I am well impressed. You're very good. You should do it for a job if you can see that. <laughs> I thought about it, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh look, I love okay. it. Now, I know we have to try it because that's our, our responsibility as, as uh, ambassadors here. So Tough job. cheers to I'm you. I'm just gonna remove this so I don't poke my eye out. Okay, perfect. Cheers to you, sir. Thank you. you. Great job. Cheers to you. Stop it. I know, right? It's very good. Bit it's special. Very good. I'll just have to double check that. Even with all that in the bottom, you can still taste that blackberry oh, yeah. coming through. It's, it's subtle, but mm. but intense, much like myself. Um, <laughs> hey, now before we finish up, Grant, I remember there's a quick story in here too about this drink. Yeah, well, essentially it was um, created in the 80s by the same guy that came up with the espresso martini. Wow. I called Dick Bradsell uh, at the time he was in the Soho Bar and Brasserie. Um, the point of this, the, the reason it was a bit unusual, it's such a simple drink. Nobody believed that he made it up, that it was his mm. creation. No one had used that creme de mule like that before. Beautiful. Um, so it instantly became a classic um, and is now, and it was for a long time, as popular as the margaritas and the yeah. cosmos and all those sorts of And espresso martinis, of course, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Grant, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. I am not worthy. You are so cool. And <laughs> make sure, me. thank you for in, uh, in coming into the kitchen today. And make sure you let us know what you think of this cocktail. It is super sensational. Have a fun time and we'll see you again soon. Hi, Champagne Lady Anne here once again. Would you like to know my top three tips for having a great dinner party? 
Firstly, make sure you invite people you really like. You don't want anybody boring at the party after all. Secondly, if you've got any friends like me, I would suggest checking if there are any allergy issues. And thirdly, if you're considering serving champagne, why not choose mine? Champagne Jacquard, of course. <laughs> and as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Cheers.